everyone. Uh, this is Career Explorations, a series of career-related panel discussions featuring faculty and alumni from Drexel University's Klein School of Law. I'm Donna Gerson, Associate Dean in charge of the Career Strategies Office, and tonight's program is all about corporate law careers. We're going to talk about a wide range of opportunities to practice in the corporate field, whether in private practice, in-house, in compliance, and in government agencies. Hear from Professor Amy Boss, Director of the Law School's Business and Entrepreneurship Concentration and a nationally recognized expert on corporate law. Meet our wonderful alumni who are shaping their careers in business law. So get ready and let's explore. Now I wanna introduce Justin Tenenbaum, a second year student who is president of the Business Law Society. Justin graduated from Emory University with a degree in business administration with concentrations in finance and international business. While an undergraduate, Justin worked at the Federal Reserve Bank of Atlanta and subsequently worked full-time in investment banking and private equity for several years before joining us at Drexel Klein School of Law. Justin, welcome. Thank you, Donna. And welcome, everyone. The Business Law Society's mission is twofold. We want to promote the awareness of business uh, related legal matters around the school, and we also want to provide students with opportunities to develop relationships within the business law community. We uh, host a variety of events, including speaking events, where we get every one from corporate attorneys to bankruptcy judges and even business owners. Uh, most recently, we had Angie Yanaris, a Drexel alum who was a uh, formerly a transactional attorney at Dilworth Paxson. And most recently, she is in-house senior counsel to Amerisource Virgin. Um, and it was great to hear her perspective working at a larger firm and how COVID has impacted her practice. We also send students to various transactional law competitions around the US. These are the uh, equivalent or the trial team moot court equivalent for students interested in business law. This year, we are sending a team to Denver, uh, the Denver Law Regional Competition, as well as to an antitrust competition. Uh, they're a great way, these competitions, to get practical experience outside of the classroom. Usually around this time each year, we host a Thanksgiving drive, which unfortunately we could not this year, but we have other fundraising opportunities throughout the year. And now it is my pleasure to introduce you to Professor Amy Boss. Professor Boss is a trustee professor of law and director of the Business Law and Entrepreneurship Concentration. She teaches contracts, commercial law, and business law. She's an expert on legal issues in e-commerce and on codifying international commercial law. She is also a member of the Council of the American Law Institute and was the first professor and second woman to have chaired the business law section of the ABA. She has contributed to numerous drafting of key pieces of commercial law legislation, including the Uniform Electronic Transactions Act and the Electronic Signatures in Global and National Commerce Act. Internationally, she has served as an advisor and a US delegate to the UN Commission on International Trade Law. A very warm welcome to Professor Amy Boss. Thank you very much, Justin, for that introduction. It's wonderful, I must say, to be here with many of my current students, including Justin, and I see a number of first year students out there, uh, as well as with my former students, many of whom are on this panel and are our distinguished alumni. And I hope I'm also addressing some soon to be students. Indeed, I have to say in reference to the business concentration that it was a Klein School of Law's dedication to establishing a business concentration that introduced students to the practical hands-on aspects of business law that attracted me to come to Drexel to begin with. Business law is a very, very broad field. And I want to emphasize that to those of you who might be considering business law. It spans a number of different kinds of practices. Transactional law, is the work that attorneys do in drafting contracts and advising clients who are entering into 
deals, which may raise, range from complicated mergers and acquisitions to simply the purchase of their first home. Litigation is something which business lawyers as well are concerned with. And litigation can take place in state courts, federal courts, or bankruptcy courts. It's quite varied and introduces you to a wide number of fields. Of course, there's other opportunities. Compliance was mentioned earlier. The ability to advise clients, whether you are in-house working within a company or with a law firm, advising your clients on how best to meet business and governmental regulations. Indeed, the area of business law is so broad that there are areas such as sports law, entertainment law, which many people do not realize are essentially the practice of business. Another one that I would point out that is very much the practice of business is those involved in patents, trademark, and copyright licensing. So it is a broad, broad tent, and we encourage people to become involved in that tent. And that is where our business law curriculum, and in particular, our business law concentration comes into play. It is designed to do two things. Actually, maybe I should say three. One, the curriculum is designed to give you a introduction, a good introduction to the very basics of business law. In fact, the basics of business law that you can use in any practice. Second, it is designed as well to allow you after having taken those basic courses to identify the specific areas of business law that interest you and in the upper levels to focus on what those special interests might be. And third, it gives you the opportunity to explore business law hands-on by participating in the cooperative or experiential education opportunities that are the hallmark of the Klein School of Law. In sum, for those of you who are thinking about the next year, you might visit the page that lists on our website and has been in, I believe, the chat of the requirements for the business law concentration. In the second year, in particular, the emphasis is placed first on business organizations, taking the foundational course, which as I mentioned earlier, is something that I would encourage all students to take. Other required courses include our income tax course, federal income tax, and of course, uh, a business tax course. Upper level courses are wide ranging, but in many respects, the highlight of our of our business and entrepreneurship program is the practical learning experience. Drexel hosts a, an entrepreneurial law clinic, which allows students who participate in an entrepreneurial law clinic to advise startup businesses from inception through incorporation and on to any of the issues that they may in, encounter. Additionally, we have co-op placements Many of those are with local businesses or firms in the Philadelphia area, but the opportunity extends way outside of the Philadelphia area. For those who are interested in a, a combined degree, we also have a, a joint a JD MBA with the Fox School of Business. So that is our concentration. And I'm pleased, very, very pleased to have, to, to be able to introduce you to our panelists who themselves were business law concentrators. In the interest of time, we have links to all of the bios for our speakers on it or in the chat. But I would like, however, to call upon each of our speakers to introduce themselves, to tell us a little bit about themselves and their relationships to Drexel so that we can get to know them personally. Brittany, do you mind if I start with you? But my name is Brittany. 
I graduated in 2015, so I've been practicing now for about five years. As Amy mentioned, I was a student of the concentration. It was actually one of the reasons why I chose to go to Drexel. Um, my story is maybe a, a little bit non-traditional. I right away sort of know, knew that I didn't want to be a litigator. I just didn't know what that meant at, at the time that I decided that. I didn't know that there was such thing as this business law world that we live in now. Um, and so I wasn't sure that I wanted to be an attorney because I was afraid if I if I can't litigate, if I can't be in a courtroom, if I can't, you know, speak in front of a bunch of people, you know, maybe I can't be a lawyer, but that is absolutely not true. Um, so, you know, long story short, fast forward, I now work in um, the corporate department at a, a law firm and I'm an associate there. And I work on, I say, a, a range of, of transactions. I won't go into too much detail, but they range from financings to, like Amy mentioned, mergers and acquisitions to um, investment management. So we advise funds, private equity funds, hedge funds, venture capital funds. Um, th that's just a small sphere of, of uh, corporate law. But yeah, so I think that if I were to, I guess, give you a piece of advice or something I wish that somebody had told me from the start was, uh, don't worry if you don't know what you wanna do in law, or if you're unsure that you can go into business law because you don't have, let's say, a finance background. Uh, if it gives you any context, I was a poetry major in college, so um, I barely can add still. Um, and I think I'm doing okay in my job. <laughs> um, so hopefully that uh, gives you a little bit of perspective of being able to uh, come into the field with not knowing anything or not having sort of an accounting or you know business background per se. Uh, I graduated in 2015 along with Brittany, um, and I did have a, uh, a finance and accounting undergrad. I, I knew that I wanted to do um, transactional law. I, I, looking back now, I didn't quite understand all of what I was getting into, um, but I knew that I wanted to um, you know, be on the business side of transactions. Um, so I work for the City of Philadelphia Law Department. My primary client is the City's $6 billion pension fund. Um, I handle all of their investment management work, um, private equity, real estate, uh, some venture capital funds. Uh, I, I negotiate along with our, our investment team, all of those investments for the board. I also do some work for the treasurer's office and some other various departments around the city. Um, we, we can get into this later, but I think my experience is probably very different than some of the other panelists here. Um, but I, I have really enjoyed my time at the city. I did a, a co-op through Drexel at the city law department and ended up getting an offer there after I graduated and passed the bar and have been, been very happy here. Um, that's a testament to the co-op and, and the business law uh, concentration. Hi, everyone. I'm Parthiv Patel. Uh, graduated uh, 2016. Uh, I started uh, working at a firm as a general corporate attorney, but afterwards, uh, I decided to focus on uh, the commercial uh, commercialization of IP. Uh, so pretty much what that means right now is, uh, for the most part, I deal with uh, any kind of uh, technology transactions that come through the door. Uh, primarily, what I've been working on recently is more of a cross-border uh, patent licensing. Uh, but along with that, you know, anything that kind of touches uh, the way I like to explain what I do is if someone has an idea or a patent on something, I try to figure out how we can make them money. Um, that's pretty much what I do as a uh, technology transactions associate. Uh, my, I guess, different, different experience in law school was that I really didn't know if I wanted to be a business attorney. Uh, but what I did in law school, which we'll talk about later, is I use the co-op opportunity to try different areas of the law to really, you know, figure out if what I wanted to do in life because uh, a co-op is a lower risk way of, you know, trying to experience different areas of the law and figuring out how they actually uh, work in real life uh, to kind of give me a better idea of what exactly I want. My name is Sam Daliwal. I'm also a graduate of the 2016 class with Parthif. Um, I was actually a member of the inaugural accelerator program as well. Um, so, I sort of knew, well, I'll, I'll tell you about my background first, first of all. So after graduating, I, I did a one-year clerkship with a, a judge in uh, Burlington County. 
Um, I worked for a mid-sized firm for about a year after that. Uh, I worked in both their business and real estate corporate groups. Uh, about a year and a half to two years ago, uh, I started my own firm. Um, you know, my practice areas are uh, real estate, uh, business, do a bit of immigration work as well. Um, I kind of knew, um, you know, before even before going to law school, that I, you know, I I like business, I like business law, and I, I wanted to work with businesses and, and uh, counsel them and do that regularly. Um, you know, my experience is a little different. I don't get the work assigned to me. I, I, I do the assigning. I have a couple of part-time attorneys and I have an illegal assistant that I work with. And, you know, I handle much of the work myself as well. Um, for me, it was just a great fit in terms of quality of life and uh, work-life balance and that sort of thing. And I'm, I'm happy to answer any specific questions that anyone may have. Well, thank you, Sam. And I might point out that Sam is not only practicing business law, you're running a business which we sometimes forget that being a lawyer, running a firm can be the practice of business law in itself. But um, Sam, since you are a, a solo practitioner or not solo, you, you have your own firm. Can you describe to us what your typical work day looks like? Sure, sure. So I usually start around 8.30 or nine o'clock. And I mean, I guess it is kind of up to me when I, when I wanna you know, get underway. Uh, I start with a, a quick brief with my uh, my legal assistant we go over the calendar we go over our task and kind of prioritize the important ones so we know what to work on uh, any given day um you know my day consists of a lot of negotiating it's a uh, um, contract graph uh, client calls meetings uh, speaking to referral sources because uh, you know as as a you know as having my own firm i'm responsible for bringing in the business that's kind of how we keep the lights on and, and what have you so um a lot of it is um, speaking to referral sources, leveraging uh, existing relationships, making new ones. And it's getting uh, pretty challenging this year with the pandemic. So we've definitely had to adapt and adjust our uh, practices. Uh, Brittany, how does your work day compare to Sam's? Uh, well, I don't get to be my own boss. So I'm, I'm super jealous of, of Sam. <laughs> um, so let's see. My work day is, without saying, you know, taking orders, I, I work for, so when you're at a firm, you work uh, for partners, right? Or, you know, associates, you work for counsel, you work in your group and you work with, you know, your, the partners who run your practice. So my typical day I'd say consists of, and now that I'm, I guess, going to be a sixth year there, um, you know, it's, it, it varies obviously depending on your year. I'd say, you know, my first couple of years when I was very junior, uh, I wouldn't speak with clients as much. Um, now I am on phone, I'm on the phone with clients, on video chat with clients, um, a lot of drafting. So a lot of drafting, which I love. It's contracts um, ranging from, like Amy described, financings to just trend, to general transactions, to everyday transactions. Um, so a lot of drafting. If you like writing, it's definitely, uh, definitely has a lot of that. And a lot of interaction, which I like. It's a lot of I'd say not negotiating as much. Um, you do a little bit of negotiating maybe up front with when you're working on certain deals, but then the rest is a lot of just client interaction going back and forth and what the client wants in their agreement, right? What the client wants in their contract. So that's another aspect of corporate law that I really like is it's a lot of, oh, it's always friendly. Well, for the most part, let's say that. It's usually friendly and uh, not a lot of adversity because you know we all want to get a deal done, right? So. This, both sides want the same thing, but it's a lot of, you know, back and forth with your client on what they want the agreement to say. So I think, uh, you know, has the best of both worlds, in my opinion. Adam, how does working for an agency differ, differ from Sam and Brittany's experience in private practice? My work is, is project-based I, because I handle the city's uh, pension board investments. Whenever we have a new private equity deal that's coming up, I need to do all the due diligence read through the limited partnership agreements, negotiate the city's terms that are required by law into the side letter. Um, it, it's a lot of negotiation and drafting, um, but I also have um, kind of an, an advisor role. So the client will reach out to me on questions, you know, regarding um, some foreign tax law or, you know, certain compliance issues um, in, in any kind of transaction that they're, that they're working through. Um, and then, you know, there, there may be drafting of memos. There may be, um, you know, I, I don't handle it, um, myself, but, 
in conjunction with our litigation department, if we have securities litigation matters, um, I, I do some, some of the legwork for that. So it's really kind of reaching out to the client and seeing what they need for whatever transactions or um, you know, potential litigation we have coming up. What types of courses do you recommend for our law students who are interested in business law? Yeah, so for me, there's, there's actually two that really stick out to me. Um, one was um, real estate transactions. Um, you know, I'm blanking on the professor's name. Uh, he was an adjunct professor. Um, he actually, I don't know if he was at Burlington Coat Factory uh, in-house with them. And he brought of um, the practical uh, aspect of uh, being, being a, an attorney uh, into the classroom, which I really enjoyed because I, I feel like a lot of the class is sort of tailored to the, to the litigation side. So, you know, it was great exposure. Actually, um, you know, a couple of years into practice, I, I actually negotiated Negotiated against him on a on a commercial resident a commercial uh, real estate transaction um, when I was with a firm called Stark and Stark and you know he was negotiating for Burlington Co Factory um, he and even in his exam you know it was really you know kind of gave you an idea of what to sort of expect uh, when you would practice um, so it wasn't too much uh, you know case based it was um, you know he brought a lot of uh, real world experience to the to the classroom. The second uh, professor boss was your class, actually, uh, bankruptcy. Um, I really enjoyed that class, um, you know, really forced us to carefully read the stats and kind of understand how the law is and how it applies facts. And uh, along with that, I would say contract drafting uh, was pretty much an essential course that I took in uh, law school that I use day in and day out. Um, obviously, like Brittany said, being in private practice, uh, especially at the junior to mid level, associate range, you're spending a lot of your day just drafting uh, and learning those basic drafting skills uh, as a 2L or a 3L uh, will go a long way in giving you a solid foundation to build on. I'll say one class I regret not taking was securities regulation. So I I wish now, knowing, knowing what I know now, I wish I had taken it. Um, it was probably the only class that I really needed to take uh, for my job now that I didn't take. Um, so I you know, if you're thinking about going to corporate law, I think that'll definitely help you. Uh, like Pratheep said, contract drafting, it's, it's, you know, you can never, you can never continue to, you know, you can never get enough of honing your drafting skills, let's put it that way. Um, it's every day is new and every document is different and every client is different. So, you know, just the more experience that you have, the better. Um, that being said, the entrepreneur, entrepreneurial law clinic is a must. If there's one thing that you have to do at Drexel is the, that clinic, especially, especially if you want to do uh, business law. I will say, I guarantee you that the documents that the 3L students at Drexel are negotiating, drafting, and working on in general are first year assignments that we have at our, at our law firms. It is, it is real world experience and it's quite incredible. So um, definitely... Definitely those two courses. I'll echo the contract drafting. I think it's a, a must. Um, it, it gives you the re real practical details and you kind of understand the mechanism of how contracts work. I remember the first time looking at a contract um, in that class, it's, it's just a ton of words. You, you can't really make sense of it, but when you go through and kind of understand how the contract's broken down and what, how the, how the sections interact with each other, um, it, it's really helpful for you know, practical work experience. I'll also mention um, transactional lawyering, uh, which is an upper level 3L class. Um, but in that class, you work through transactions with a, um, you know, with, with your professor as, as the client and get a lot of pushback and, and a lot of kind of real world practical nitty gritty of negotiations. And um, I found that class immensely helpful um, in, in dealing with my private equity work, um, because, you know, we, we read through limited partnership agreements. I had to understand how these things work. Um, and, you know, that's a lot of what I do now. I wanted to ask a little bit more about this notion of experiential learning. Brittany, you did mention the entrepreneurial law clinic, but uh, let's go back to co-ops, co-op being such an important feature. Adam, can you can you uh, elaborate on your experience with the co-op? I was placed in the city's finance and contracts division, um, which is where I am now. And I had some fantastic mentors and was given whatever assignments I asked for, basically. The, you know, if I completed an assignment and I went to my boss and said, you know, bring me on 
for, for something else or bring me to this meeting. I'm interested in learning about this. Um, you know, he, he gave me everything I was looking for. And, you know, I, I think um, the co-ops are a fantastic experience to kind of um, guide how you want to get the experience. Ask a lot of questions. It's, it's the perfect time to do that. Um, you know, and, and depending on the, you know, where, where you're placed, um, I think a lot of our co-op partners have that in mind, um, are willing and ready to take students on and give them experience and answer their questions and kind of help them understand the landscape of, you know, the, the legal field that they're jumping into. Yeah, yeah, I actually agree with that, but I used co-ops as a way of weeding out what I didn't like. Uh, I knew that, you know, I had an interest in business law, but never really knew if I, uh, you know, really liked it or never really knew what it was like to be a business attorney. Uh, so what I did was I had a business law internship. I had, uh, a, a, you know, a litigation internship. I had a uh, uh, an employment law uh, co-op internship. Uh, and I used, you know, the co-op as, and these internships as a mechanism, uh, as, as a mechanism to weed out what I really didn't like. Uh, and it just kind of, you know, made my understanding of what a business, being a business law attorney, a little bit stronger and gave me a solid foundation uh, and the confidence uh, that I needed to know that, you know, this is what I wanted to do kind of for the rest of my life. Uh, so I think uh, aside from getting exposure to business law, co-ops are a great way of getting exposure to different areas of the law that you might have an interest in or might not. I just want to test it out uh, because it's what, 10 weeks, you're, you know, you go in, you do the best you can and then you decide, hey, is this for me or is this not? I will say an another, plug or great thing that I loved about Drexel and about the, you know, the business law concentration in, in general was, so I, I did do a co-op my 3L year, but, and, and that was incredibly valuable and I loved it, but I also got to the chance to work um, and get credit for having, having a job uh, my 3L year. And that I did by literally just Googling, you know, I don't even know if I knew what private equity meant. I don't know that I still know what it means. Uh, you know, private equity, Philadelphia, and sending emails to info at you know, XYZ Ventures. Hi, I'm a student, um, I'd love to volunteer. I think I wanna work in this space, I'd love to help out. And I ended up um, getting a position at a, a small angel firm um, in Philadelphia at the time. And so Drexel was entrepreneurial itself. It was, they were willing to work with me. They were willing to sort of, they, you, know, you can create your own path there and you have the support and the resources to do so. So that's, I think, another thing I just I think is really important to highlight is even if you don't see a co-op uh, on the list or you don't, you know, you're not sure what, you, what you're looking for, if you happen to find somebody, you know, find a, a position or meet somebody, um, you know, in the field or in the industry and want to take a chance, then Drexel will, I'm sure, work with you to, to you know, get you whatever experience you want. So it's great. Brittany, I want to go back to you because you started researching job opportunities in business law pretty early on. What tips or resources do you suggest both to current students and incoming students about ways to build a network? I think my biggest hurdle was the fear aspect, right? I, I still, I don't like speaking in front of crowd. This is what, that's why I didn't want to be a litig litigator, right? I don't like, you know, speaking, you know, addressing an audience, speaking in front of crowds. Um, I'm great one-on-one -on -one and I, lo I love people. I'm very social, but the fear of just kind of reaching out into the unknown and not knowing I didn't know anything, but once I was able to sort of swallow my pride and just do so, you'll realize, especially, especially as a law student, everyone is willing to help you. Everyone is willing to just give you whatever you need. So I, I, I think if I could, you know, give you one takeaway, it's don't be afraid to, to reach outside the box and, um, you know, just think, hey, you know, I'm not sure, you know, what I want to do or what kind of environment I even want to work in um, post law school, but uh, I'm willing to sort of take a chance and, and do my best to connect with those in the space around me. So, I mean, Drexel's great. They have tons of networking programs that they host regularly. And I know that, you know, we live in a virtual world now, but I'm, you know, I'm sure that there will still be so many opportunities for you to meet not only other lawyers in the industry, but meet um, people who could potentially be your clients someday. And just really staying in contact and doing your best to, to stay enthusiastic and um, positive about, about your experience, I think will go a long way. I completely agree with that. Um, 
as a law student and even early in your career, it's always good to kind of take chances and not be scared and just reach out. Uh, I remember I used to just blindly, I don't know if I should say this, I should just blindly email like managing partners at like Dilworth and say, hey, I'm a law student, kind of interested in this. I don't really know, you wanna to talk to me. And you'd be surprised the responses that I received. Um, for example, a managing partner of Dilworth actually said, all right, you know, when do you have time to call, like, you know, set up a time with my secretary, I'll set up a call. Uh, and he literally sat on the phone with me for two hours and discussed, you know, options may, I may have. And then I told him about how I was looking for a job. And he guided me to a couple of other partners that were looking for associates and kind of, you know, facilitated, facilitated those connections. Uh, I did the same thing with the managing partner at uh, Stradley. Uh, I think it's, it, it's, it's intimidating to do it, but I think partners will respect you doing it. And what's the worst that can happen? They not respond to your email. Uh, there's really no downside, especially as a law student, into reaching out and asking for help because uh, people are willing to help. Uh, and I think along with reaching out to these uh, power, I guess, power players in the field, I would also reach out to the alumni. Uh, Drexel is really, or the Drexel alumni is really good about helping people out. Uh, there hasn't been one job that I've received that I haven't reached out to an alumni that's already been there. And that alumni hasn't, you know, proactively helped me get the job or give me advice or whatever it may be to, uh, to you know, situate me better for the upcoming interview. So I think reaching out to partners is a good thing, but also reaching out to the alumni because uh, the Drexel alumni is a close-knit community and we're willing to help out. Uh, once a dragon, always a dragon. So I did the same thing Parthiv did, and I, it wasn't just partners that I, I reached out to. I re reached out to many associates as well who were sort of new in their, in their career. And um, you'd be surprised how many of them are willing to meet with you or chat with you over the phone. Looking back, if you could go back in time, what would you tell your younger self, either when you were considering law school or when you were a 1L? So the, the biggest tip that I would give is meet and make friends with as many of your fellow students as possible. Um, once you're in the practice of law, it's, you know, your peers are the ones that send you business and um, send you clients and you'll be doing the same thing with them. Uh, you know, I'm running my own practice now. I can tell you that, you know, monthly, sometimes weekly, I'll get a referral. I got one today from actually one of my, uh, uh, one of the, one of the people in the accelerator program with me in the class of 2016, um, you know, speak to as many people as you can make friends, you know, you're going to be helping one another once you graduate, you know, we, we really are a team at Drexel. I would also say, uh, don't be afraid to take risks, right? Uh, this is the time to take risks, uh, especially as a 1L. Uh, so, you know, take a, class that you might have an interest in or might not have an interest in, um, you know, you know, reach out to people that you normally would have reached out to. Uh, just do whatever it takes and take those risks to better uh, situate yourself for the future. I think I would say just take every opportunity that you possibly can. Uh, there, there's going to be a lot of opportunities throughout law school, um, whether it's, you know, clubs or associations or law review, moot court, um, taking classes that you know, you, you wouldn't normally um, or, or, or may not fit in with your overall plan. Um, just put yourself out there and take advantage of all that we have to offer. I think I'd give, my, I'd give myself so much, so much advice, <laughs> but I think one, one piece of advice in particular, and maybe this is not just applicable to law school, but just um, career life in general is, Try not to try very hard not to compare yourself to other people. And I know, especially in uh, the legal industry and in just um, you know the way law school curriculums are built, it's it's sort of they, they sort of almost force you to feel that way, force you to feel like you know you need to study a certain amount, you need to do X Y Z, especially if your your peers are doing so too. But I um, will say, once I got over the fear of you know, learning that well, how I learn differently, everybody learns differently. You know, if I don't need to study 100 hours a day, I won't. If I do, I will. But I try my hardest every day not to compare myself or my work to, you know, those of my peers because you're only doing yourself a disservice in the end. And I promise you, as long as you try hard and are enthusiastic about what you want to do, you will be absolutely fine. And my one piece of advice would be start your networking now. You've heard from four of our alums. You know where they are. You know how they've gotten here. This is the beginning of your networking. Uh, look around at the others who are in your classes. That is your network and it will grow. It's 
you will find, as, as Sam said, that in, a, you know, in several years time, they will be leaders, you will be leaders, and you will be setting the examples for people that come after you. I actually have a question for each of the panelists, and it's about the, the issue of work-life balance, if that exists. Can you talk a little bit about how you manage stress and how you balance the time between work and the, re and, and the rest of your life? I will say it's, a, it's a, about perspective, I think, at least for me. So it's easy and you will have plenty of work, I'm sure, at your disposal to do if you wanted to work 24 hours a day, right? And so, and that'll be the case in law school too. You'll, you will feel like you could never stop studying. But I think having a perspective on um, just what's important to you and, and mental health as well, right? I, I can't work 12 hours a day every day for four weeks in a row or else I you know, won't have the capacity to, to do things that make me happy or to, to live the life I wanna live. So I think I make my work-life balance work because I handle my, you know, I set boundaries, I make my own schedule and there's, I think, um, you have every opportunity to do so and you should you should never feel like work or school is the only thing you have going on. Um, you should always make time for things that you enjoy. Yeah, I, I would suggest figuring out what works for you. Uh, like I like during law school, the way I handled it was that I knew uh, between 8 a.m. and let's say 6 p.m. I was, you know, a law student. So that meant going to classes, reading. Um, studying, whatever it may be. And I did that religiously every day. But I knew on Saturday or starting Saturday at like 3 p.m. until Monday morning, I was not a law student. So that's when I did my other extracurricular things that I used to do. Uh, for some students, you know, they did a nine to five, but then also worked a little bit more on the weekends. So you're just kind of knowing yourself and understanding what schedule works for you, I think will go a long way in helping manage stress. Uh, Obviously, when finals came around, things changed a little bit, but for overall, just kind of sticking to that routine and schedule uh, will help, you know, make you more successful in the long run because it'll help manage your stress. I, I would say along the same lines, you know, find a way to, to manage your stress in a healthy way, um, whether it's exercise, it's reading, you know, outside of, um, you know, all of your law reading, it's music, find something that's, you know, a healthy way to manage stress um, that works for you. So we also have a question, um, and it's actually two questions, so I'm going to try to combine them. One is figuring out which industry of corporate law, and a second related question is, any advice for somebody who wants to work in, in an interdisciplinary area, um, a bit like, uh, well, all of you, for example, like in tech transactions and IP mergers, for example. I think to answer the first question of knowing what area to go into, I think that just, you know, involves you just getting out, meeting people, talking to people, uh, understanding what they do. Uh, for example, uh, at my old firm, I used to just be a general corporate attorney, but I knew I had an interest or I felt like I had an interest in tech and IP transactions. So I started going out to like Philly Tech Week, meeting other attorneys, uh, seeing what they did, getting to know them a little better, better and understanding, you know, that's kind of the avenue that I wanted to take. Uh, but the thing is, my old firm didn't have that. But what I did to uh, my supervising partner said, hey, I have this interest. Uh, can we make it a practice area here? And she obviously said, yeah, go for it. But obviously, no, the firm's not going to fully support you until you start, you know, kind of showing uh, revenues coming in. Uh, but, but I did, you know, I, I took on the initiative, went out, started meeting people uh, under uh, trying to, you know, build clients or networks. Uh, but fortunately for me is that this current opportunity came up. So I really didn't have to foster that really or foster, I guess, that business development as much. Uh, but kind of just to go back to answer the first question is just getting out and, you know, meeting people, taking the initiative to uh, do, do, uh, taking the initiative to understand what they do and, uh, possibly taking it on yourself, on yourself to learn more. One of the, the biggest surprises, I don't know if surprise is the right word, but that I had post law school was realizing that I still didn't know anything, right? I knew how to think like a lawyer. I knew how to read like a lawyer, but you know, you, you get to the job and you learn most of the job at, you know, at least for me at the firm while you're, at, while you're at the firm, like on the job. And, uh, so what's nice is 
it, depending on what type of uh, practice area you go into, you might have an opportunity to try out different assignments with, uh, you know, for instance, if you go to a firm that has um, multi-practice areas, you can try different assignments with different groups and, and kind of get a taste for what you like. Um, and I, I think I can speak for all of us when I say that even if we are quote unquote in a particular industry or a particular sector of corporate law, we work with a variety of, of issues and clients and transactions that probably span every sector of, of corporate law. So uh, you might be on a deal that's an M&A deal and then, but you have ERISA issues, you have IP issues. So you kind of get a little taste of, of everything. Um, and I think taking classes like Adam said, transactional, transactional lawyering in the clinic will immensely help you into at least narrow a little bit of what you might think you want to do in, a, in the corporate law world. And to the, to the first question of the young law student, I would, I would find attorneys that are in the uh, industry of um, corporate law that you're interested in, meet with them, speak to them, ask a lot of questions. Uh, you know, that's one way to kind of learn about the different areas that you could potentially get into. I want to thank our panelists. It's always so wonderful to see our alumni successfully navigating the professional world. Thank you from Drexel Klein School of Law. Have a good night.